the first thing to talk about is just the nature of the show, which, look, unsurprisingly, it has changed and evolved because it is a technology show. And what's pretty apparent to me is that there is a hierarchy of technology and some technologies are no longer really all that welcome on the show floor or at least aren't depending on which company is exhibiting. The main example of that would be Sony, a company that has essentially abandoned the idea of highlighting product at CES. You go to Sony's booth and you're like, okay, this is a movie studio and also a company that makes equipment for making movies. And okay, they also have a car or they have technology in a car that they're making in conjunction with Honda. So what I'm gonna do to get started is walk through the automotive section of this show, which gets to occupy the new wing of the convention center, massive new wing. And uh, I think what's interesting about that is it has relieved the crowding in the central hall where the TV makers, the major consumer electronics, audio visual companies do their exhibiting. So it wasn't as packed and crazy as it has been in past years, but that didn't diminish the size and impressiveness of the booths. In fact, what was really notable is that uh, Hisense and TCL have fundamentally caught up with LG and Samsung in the sense of having full-size booths, comprehensive product lines, and really like catching up. And in the category of TVs, well, Samsung barely had any on its show floor. Samsung didn't even bring out its uh, Quantum Dot OLED that has the matte screen, which I consider one of the more exciting products. Uh, it also left the 8K ultra short throw for, well, some other day and some other place. But uh, they did show off the micro LED panels, which have been perfected this year. So at least we had uh, that cutting edge technology on display. And LG, they uh, seem to be looking for an application for transparent OLED. I mean, it's a cool, if expensive, way to create a novelty effect from a TV that uh, I could see being very useful, let's say, in a retail environment and maybe appealing to uh, uh, somebody who wants a TV that can really wow their neighbors certainly made for an impressive display at the show. And interestingly enough, Samsung had transparent micro LED. And then over in uh, another Chinese TV maker, Skyworth's booth, another transparent OLED. So this idea, well, not unique to LG, certainly. Uh, and sort of an oddball thing to pop up as uh, the showcased tech for, for displays at this particular show. But hey, look, micro LED, that's going to be the future of TVs if they can figure out an affordable way to manufacture it. And I, despite the, <laughs> unapproachable cost of the technology, I did give it a editor's pick because what Samsung achieved is micro LED displays where you cannot see the seams between the individual tiles at all. Not a chance. The seams are invisible now. So you can in fact make TVs that look like the TVs we've come to expect, which is that you would never see a grid of tiles on them. And in every other respect, the performance is off the charts amazing in terms of viewing angles and brightness. 
And the fact that the screens are intrinsically free of glare. So it is exciting to see the maturity of micro LED, modular micro LED, uh, and that Samsung has brought it to a point that even a very picky home theater centric video enthusiast would find more than acceptable. It is the state of the art. Anyway, it is Hisense and TCL that are really owning it in terms of TVs, and it is in their booths where you find the new behemoths, 110 inches, 115 inches, a new realm of sizes that are highly, well, I mean, size competitive with projection and screens. But there's a big difference, a key difference, and that is a TV can reproduce the peak brightness of HDR and the necessary contrast to create HDR. And that is something that projectors can't do, even under the best of circumstances, and certainly not under less than ideal circumstances, because they just cannot produce either the peak brightness or the contrast needed to represent HDR. So these TVs, in a sense, are the way to appreciate creative intent when you're watching content mastered for home viewing. Food for thought. But this show also was great for projectors, so nothing to complain about there. And the XGMI booth was quite exceptional. So what we're seeing in projection is uh, the availability of new options, options that at some screen sizes actually look quite TV-like, but let's face it, they're not gonna be able to compete with the actual TVs that I just discussed, but they will cost less and be capable of projecting even larger screen sizes.